All right. So welcome again, if you can hear me and are uh, you are excited to hear about today's career session focus. Give me some reaction and then I put up my presentation to start. Okay, okay, everyone. Okay, everyone. I hope we managed to send um, um, reminders within our specific groups for others to join because I can see that we still few here, but we will start anyway. But yeah, if you haven't dropped that message, please drop it there so that they see that you're already here. All right, so today's conversation or today's, uh, um, today's career session focus is going to be on culture fit. This is something that is very, very meaningful in different companies and it's something that I like, you know, joining a company that has a specific culture. I mean, this is what differentiates companies from other companies. This is what makes uh, the company uh, lovable or likable or makes it worse. Like people, I, I, I don't know if we have ever heard different people who will, who always, um, who always will tell you that oh this company i've never enjoyed working there uh this is it was a toxic environment like i didn't enjoy everything that in, in into that company specifically just because of the company culture or because of someone who they were working with or just because of any other reason that was there so a culture fit it's something very very important that so many companies care about to the extent that into the interview process of different companies, like these, especially tech companies, they, into their interview process, they have to have you undergo a culture fit interview, big time. So before we proceed, I would like, I would like to hear from anyone here uh, before into, when you were still applying for different jobs, have you ever gone into a culture fit interview? before anyone who did anyone who did to share is the experience how was it what were the questions uh specifically into that interview um i'm guessing i mean if you have never also you can give me just a text into the chat box or even a no reaction never never okay okay all right i'm excited that we have never gone through it and that we are going to be having a challenge about it this will help us to know that this kind of interviews exist and that we should be uh, caring much more about preparing ourselves uh, when it comes to this kind of interview. Me, myself, I've gone through different culture interviews. Actually, there are, there, there are a higher probability that you might pass all hiring process uh, steps. And when you don't fit into, uh, I, I mean, when you don't pass the culture interview, you might get dropped you know there is a higher probability for that to happen probably you had an assignment and you passed that technical assignment uh you passed the presentation of your assignment you passed any other interview with your supervisor but then the culture interview is mostly conducted by the hr team you know if the hr team doesn't see that you will fit into their culture they say mm -mm, we don't we don't want you you know no matter how you passed everything else you might get dropped here but yeah uh are we i have another slide to talk about different questions that comes into the this interview so let's proceed since we don't have anyone else who have had this experience before so into uh what do we mean when we talk about organizational cultures uh and why do why does it matter to so many organizations Organization culture simply means what the company is and what it is not. 
what the company is and what it is not. You will find that the, the culture at Google is totally different with the culture at, uh, let's say, uh, let's say where, Amazon and Microsoft. Mostly at Amazon, the, we, their culture will be more focused on how they approach their clients because it's a selling, it's a buying and selling platform. But at Google, because it's just a search engine company, their culture will be more focused on diversity, how well they accommodate everyone within their team. So and a culture is always uh, realized internally. This is something that doesn't happen ex externally. I mean, you don't hear about a certain client of Google saying that, oh, I like the culture at Google. No, you have never lived that culture. You know, it's like you are Ethiopian and you come to tell me that you like Rwandan culture when you have never been there here or have never lived that kind of experience. So this is just an internal thing. It, it simply explains what the company is and what the company is not. And what does then culture fit means? It means the ability of an individual to blend in with his or her new working environment. This is where um, you you get to assess the culture fit. As the as actually the culture fit goes two ways. It's not just the interview assessing if you're going to be fitting into their culture. It's also you assessing if you're going to be fitting into their culture. If you are seeing that the kind of language that is being used throughout the interview process, or the kind of um, or they're not specific about their the, the role that you're going to be doing, that means the culture, their culture is very, very disorganized. I mean, everyone assess on the both sides. They just be looking at you as a human and you have to look at them also how they humanize everything they do there. I mean, is it a collaborative space? Is it a welcoming space? Is it uh, a respectful space? Is it, um, I mean, anything, anything. What do they do there to, show that they are that collaborative or supportive specifically. So yeah, let's continue. We get to understand it more as we go through the slides. So I have these two different pictures. One is from Google Currents, you know, from their LinkedIn page. And another one is from the former CEO of Twitter, Jack, you know. So at, at Google, this is what's written under their culture. They say that we are building a company where people of different views, backgrounds, and experiences can do their best work and show up for one another. I mean, the, the, what, what does this show? Different views, background, and experience, it means they are targeting diversity. I mean, they, they hire everyone from around the world, actually, because Google is used worldwide. So this means a lot to them where they can do their best best work that means uh, staying competitive on a global scale i mean where they are coming to do their best work so if you are a person who look look like you're not coming to do your best work you don't have you have a higher probability of not being hired at google at all and then show up for one another and when they're assessing you this means they are looking on how uh you, you you approach collaboration, you approach support, you approach different things that comes in the in regards to showing up for your colleagues. And then a place where every Googler feels like they belong. You know, at, at the end of it all, they just also want you to feel like this is home, you know, this is home. And you can take it into your pride to say that you work at Google. So they continue to say that, so whether you are a part of developing a innovative technology campaigns or you're part of the product team or the partnership team, your work here is a chance to accomplish things that matter. So bring your uniqueness, insights, imagination and healthy disregard to, for the impossible. You know, this shows that uh, they, they bring everyone together, no matter the 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 department where you were working in um i mean they bring everyone together you bring your uniqueness and insights uh to the goal of them doing the impossibles i mean the biggest job that google has been doing over the years and then we have twitter i'm not sure where this 
picture was taken but when i was reading about this it was when it was an article about um culture fit that's where i found this and um they were talking about how different companies i i, I don't twitter have this kind of history from Jack leadership to Elon leadership. I mean, Elon leadership is so crazy itself because he's a strict person, big time. I don't know if you ever, um, actually, yeah, there is a podcast link I will share with you of someone called Jonathan who wrote a book about the life of, um, the life of Elon Musk. He lived with Elon Musk for two years, observing his everything. And then he shared a story about how they went to visit Twitter for the very first time uh, when Elon decided to buy Twitter and they went to visit it for the very first time. And Elon was like so surprised to see that they have uh, the calmness rooms, they have the mother's room, they have different working stations where you can work sitting or seated. I mean, he was like, this is a chilled environment. Why are you guys spending on these? You know, to him, anything culture, anything that supports employee satisfactions and wellness, it's not a thing. You know, he just wants to, to see you working and being productive, you know. So this has been a thing at Twitter. And um uh, Jack here openly said that we have a lot of conservative learning folks in the company. Uh, and to be honest, they don't feel safe to express their opinions at the company. They feel so silenced. And also this happened actually when so many people were being fired at Twitter due to a layoff. They were not allowed to talk about anything that led to the layoff. So this means that even internally, you don't just raise your ideas as you have. It's like a very diplomatic place. You just do what you are supposed to do and go home, you know? So these are different kind of cultures in different companies. And when you are reading about the company you want to join, I'm sure everyone is going to be like, I wanna go to Google. I don't know, but most of us, we are going to say like, I, I wanna go to Google. I wanna go somewhere where my work is welcomed and appreciated. I don't wanna be here where I have to work like a political, uh person who just have to do what they are supposed to do and go home you know like you you're not going to be used at your full capacity you know so yeah totally different cultures and i believe this is going to be this explains clearly what culture is and what they focus on you know so let's move forward another question let's look into the 10 academic culture why do you think our, cul our, our culture is here? Without looking at the website, you know? So yeah, just tell us, why do you think our culture is here and say it on a, uh, on a 10 academy community perspective? I want a few people. How do you think our culture is like? From everything we do from morning, during stand-ups, during technical calls, CBS, career session, uh, guest talks, anything. What have you realized that you can say, oh, this is our culture at Ten Academy? Anyone? <clears throat> I can give you another tip to, uh, to not generalize the question. Just look into the behaviors of different people. How do you work with Yabi? Is Yabi a very uh, cushing person, he, uh, like a very hard working person and what kind of behaviors does he promote? How does he, what kind of advices does he give you always when he's like, I encourage you to speak up and blah, 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 all those kind of things. I want you to look into that content. Okay, Rodolf said adaptation, open-mindedness, and willing to learn and discovery. Correct. Very correct. Let's hear from more people. Yes, Yvonne. I think that um, in Ten Academy, people are willing to help each other. As in you you help people when they have issues 
So if I have an issue and I reach out, you'll just help me. That is one thing I have noted. Yes, thank you. All right. Thank you, Yvonne. Correct. Here we have a really supporting and collaborative culture. No one wants just to win alone. We want to progress together and ensure that we are all winning big time. Anyone else? Let's take one last person. Anyone else? If someone to talk from CBS perspective, for instance. Anyone? Just think it in a way um, uh, that if I came and asked you, how is Ten Academy to you? What would you say? Simply, just like that. Anyone? It's just a simple question. What is Ten Academy to you? How can you tell it to another, to your friend? specifically without mentioning about ai technical things that we're providing mm -mm. just like how is the environment how is that workplace mm -hmm. okay rudolph said friendly environment yes ekram okay so like in academy it's somewhere that uh, it's same here where there is a guidance to live how to live in the real world like we are seeing the real world uh, it's like a model of the real world in our hand and it will just uh, tell us how to be how to get into the tech environment okay thank you so much Ekram. and thank you Yvonne and Rodolfo for sharing as well <clears throat> so yeah uh, Ten Academy to me, I would say that um, um, really it's a supportive environment. It's fun to be part of. Really, everyone here is fun and engaging every time, and it's an ambitious. It's it's a it's a community of ambitious people, big time. We are here because our ambitions are very high, and we want to achieve them. You know, so yeah, I would just define it into those three sentences so so how is this culture created how do we get to sit and everyone can join us and find out that 10 academy is a fun and collaborative and supportive environment how how is this thing created it's mostly designed by the executive you know when the working environment is toxic or negative in any way it means the executive doesn't care about it at all, or probably even the executive is a little bit toxic, <laughs> just to be honest. So everything is just created from the top down to everyone. So the executives are the one who sit and uh, decide that they are going to be having this kind of actions and behaviors. You will be surprised to join different companies where you, you probably you have to approach a certain VP for a certain work related thing and you feel like you have to respect them so much because you are just a junior and for them they are vps you know vice president of the company but also get surprised on the kind of respect they replied with to you even though you are junior so that's a thing that executive have to set in other companies you might have to write an email to us to an assistant to whoever like to, to a lot of people for you to be able to reach that kind of vice president you know unnecessary kind of steps political kind of steps unless you're actually working in politics that's the whole structure but in our tech or software as a service companies it has to be more flexible and it's just the executive that have to say this. So everything will be defined by their actions and behaviors. 
And then what leaders pay attention to? Do they care about their people or are they paying attention to something else? you know and then what gets rewarded versus what gets punished for this is also part of the things they look into when they are developing this kind of culture into our different cultures within our different countries especially as africans we 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 already know we have different cultures and into these cultures you have something different things you are rewarded for and you have others that you are punished for we already know that we can get so many examples so take it from that perspective and then also allocation of attention and resources especially when most of the resources are not being uh are not being directed to employees straight there are less probability that their culture is going to be strong because the culture is fostered is created by the executives by it's fostered or maintained by everyone else who's going to implement it who are the employees and um why you can imagine why the why do organizations care about their cultures it's simply because of the following most of the time it's employee satisfaction and engagement they want you to come and work at uh, the company even though it's a small company startup with no many kind of um, employees. They just want you to come and work at your best. Make, I mean, ensure that you are into a very nice environment that even when you decide to leave the company, you have something nice to talk about. This is when, uh, for instance, 10 Academy perspective, you get these alumni coming back to willingly share their experience. They, <clears throat> Uh, there are so many different places they can be paid to share the, actually those kind of experiences. You know, I'm putting it on a high level, but here it's in that way. But for them, because they know how 10 Academic contributed to, to their growth, how they enjoyed working with everyone who was at 10 Academy, how they made connection, how, I mean, everything they benefited, they still come and willingly take their time to prepare the guest talk session share the experience answer all questions you have we transparently you know that's the kind of satisfaction that also uh different employers look for when they are fostering their culture and then number two developing a common way of thinking which drives a common way of acting period they want um especially are we come again are we come again to different perspectives of um different examples of amazon versus google for instance amazon really cares about customers because it's a selling and buying platform so either even when you are joining as a tech person or as a marketing person or any department you are joining if you're not a customer centric person you are not going to get hired because they want to promote the same way of thinking they want everyone everyone to work towards the culture their main goal because the culture of course also um it's, it's like something that uh fuels the goal achievement process you know so they want you to keep thinking the same way so that you can act in the same way for the same goal and then number three shared assumptions and beliefs the silent code of conduct you know you, you i i don't know i've never been in a company that always reminds people about the silent about the code of conduct but all these kind of conduct are always there so most of the time when you have people who are strong about your culture they have the same beliefs and most of the time they are positive so it's like a silent code of conduct you don't have to always remind them how to behave you get the number four is the glue that holds the organization together or not people with the same culture they are always bonded together we know that um actually the main reason i guess that we keep fighting as humans in this world we keep hearing about wars between israeli and palestinian is because we have different cultures very different cultures very different beliefs very different uh what religions i guess everything that contributes to making us different it's within our culture that that brings all of 
conflicts or uh, whatever misunderstandings within the countries it's just culture so here it's in that perspective also the companies does that so that it can hold the organization together people with the same culture they will always be respectful of each other supporting they will always work towards the common goal and then in their also employment brand in its truest form whether they have it or not this is their employment brand how are we lift an academy saying um with with the reviews of how i worked here it's gonna be their brand and that's gonna be public. So most of the time they want to promote their employment brand on a global scale. And number last also, there are so many, but yeah, number last here is to create a, a sustainable competitive advantage. When you have people who are very excited to come uh, in the morning, to come to work, do the job, and they are happy to be there, they are innovative, they are doing everything possible for their the company. I mean, they are taking it as their company within their respective roles. This will create a competitive advantage, big time, which is different with when you have a toxic environment. Nobody is going to be happy to come to work. When the management is not right, everyone is going to feel like, oh my God, uh, someone is coming, Pascaline is entering, you know, and they feel like, they are so sad to come to work just because the manager, you are there, just because Pascaline is there. So you can imagine, you know. So, yeah, these are some of the factors why the organization care about their cultures big time, big time. And I'm so happy that so many organizations have started to realize this and everyone, when they're talking, all CEOs, when they're doing any pitch desk, when they're talking about what they do, they talk about their culture because everyone is interested to know how they live within the company internally. And then um, we have different culture focus examples. I can mention here uh, that we are also going to see a few of them within the, uh, within the challenge. So we have innovative, sorry. We have innovative culture, innovation culture. And I will give you here an example of Apple. Um, Apple really prioritizes innovation as a core value. They always encourage creativity because their market is super competitive. There are so many phone and laptop and other same tech tech uh, companies that does the same things as them so it's always always mandatory to be innovative when you are at apple i mean in in your area of work you have to be looking for details where you can um uh wh where you can be innovative you know so when they are going to be hiring at apple i'm pretty sure this is something also they focus on i don't know how the assignments looks like but you have to be an innovative person someone who really thinks because that's how you're going to be contributing to their success no any other way then also customer centric culture we talked about amazon for instance they prioritize delivering exceptional customer experience they emphasize customer satisfaction always responsiveness personalized services when needed you know in any of their kind of um aspect of operation of their operations that's what they do and then collaborative culture where they encourage teamwork this is owned by so many companies of course where they open up they they, they encourage open communication uh, and sharing ideas i mean like everyone's idea is highly valued and they always want to hear what you think those are the companies that always put out different surveys or companies that puts, whose management puts everyone within the department into the planning calls. Mostly the, the, the plannings are done by the management, the senior management. But when you get involved into the planning or decision-making processes, it's because they have a collaborative culture. They value your idea no matter your position. And then performance-driven, this is the, this is the, uh, organization that also prioritizes performance and results really like they are super ambitious so always they are driven by results so if you're not driving results then or if you're taking longer to drive results then it's an issue 
you know, probably within the assignment, they will look into how long the, assign the assignment took you to complete. Was it an assignment that you had to submit in three days? Did you submit it in one day at least? You know, you will have an advantage as a candidate. And then also a learning culture for companies like um, learning platforms like IBM, for instance, or Microsoft. They, they prioritize continuous learning development. And people at Microsoft are always paid for, um, for different employee trainings because the, the education thing or anything to develop around Microsoft, it's always evolving. It's always evolving and they have so many ed tech projects. So they always put them under trainings, under research projects so that they can be as innovative as possible. So if you are someone who doesn't have this kind of learning mindset or learning really you are not a fan of schooling or learning something new and they realize that into the culture feeds then mm -mm, you know so all all these are uh, also the ethical the inclusive the adaptive culture process oriented family style family style is those uh mostly this happens to startups where they take everyone uh, they try to create something like a family environment, you know, um, where everyone feels like they are at home, where you feel like the manager is like your what, your uncle? You know, those companies that say, oh, here we are culture, most of the times they are startups. So these are different cultures that, uh, that different companies invest in according to their focus. Most of the time it's according to their focus or their mission or goals, yeah. So as the last slide, we have uh, different than sample inter fit, culture fit interview questions that might be asked. It's just like common sense questions. They just wanna hear your perspective on these. They will ask some random things like uh, what values are you drawn to and what's your ideal workplace? And when you start to say something or when you highlight everything and forget about their main focus within the work, then you are losing marks. You know, when you're talking about their ideal workplace and for instance, again, on the Amazon uh, example, you are talking about the collaborative workplace and everything and everything. And you forget about to say a customer centric workplace they're gonna be like, you are saying generic things, you know, you probably don't have that culture mindset. It's just one of those two options. And then what type of culture do you thrive in? What culture of, uh, what type of culture do you thrive in? You know, and you have to think that your response re reflects to the organizational culture. It has to. And then also, why do you want to work here? Those are some random questions they will ask you. You have to always reflect to the type of culture they live by. And also, how would you describe our culture based on what you've seen so far during the whole hiring process? And it, also, is this something that can work for you? And they will judge you from here as well. And also because they will see how you have been observing them because they're so different companies, they want someone who we feel like they're not just coming to work. They want someone who understands that they are coming to work there so that they can contribute to their career growth. You know, so you're, you're paying attention to everything and being able to answer this question. It's, it's, it's a crucial thing. And also what best practices would you bring with you from another organization like what's best thing are you going to bring do you probably know that they don't have uh team bonding activities and you're going to be initiating team bonding activities or friday great grateful friday or shouting out to anyone who did something amazing i mean different different cultures that you think could benefit them so that's something you also have to be ready for before joining a culture interview and also some situational questions, like tell me about a time when you worked 
for an organization where you felt like you were not a strong culture fit and why was it a bad fit um this happens all the time for instance i have a friend who got rejected from the culture interview in an organization where i used to work before called alx why was it what was her rejected and she actually was qualified she knew what she was coming to do there but she was kind of a silent person uh an introvert kind of she doesn't talk much she's just so technical and her role it was uh, she, she wanted to be a country director for alex in where actually it's even in yeah okay it was in ghana yeah she wanted to be a country director for Alex in Ghana. So she lost the job to someone else who was not very, very competent, but that person is an outgoing person. It's an extrovert. And the company, they want that kind of person because of their community. Their community is just a Gen Z community. So she lost the job, despite the fact that she was qualified, but she didn't fit into the culture fits. The culture at Alex, you have to be someone outgoing, you have to be someone who's fast, someone who's able to speak, someone who can make people laugh. Like, I, I don't know. Just You have to be just an extrovert, you know? So that's an example. So, yeah, um, that is it. So I put here different culture, uh, different views from executives, like the very known executives, for instance, from Starbucks. I think we hear of Starbucks. Uh, to those who don't have it in their countries and also mckenzie the biggest tech consultation company the executives um the the founder here say that we have no patent on anything we do like anything can be copied by anyone else but the thing you that you cannot copy is the heart and the soul and the culture of our company that distinguishes us from everyone else big time and actually I, I think you have uh, you, you know about the Starbucks thing of uh, paying for some of the employees school fees until he feeds of their employees until they finish high school I mean things like those things that keeps people working and that's their culture there you know supporting their employees with their personal needs as paying your kids school fees and then uh, also Ian Davis MD at McKinsey also said we have a culture dedicated to creating a place where talented people want to work. This is something that attracts talented people, like genius people, genius people like you. So, and she said that this gives you, give us a tremendous advantage when it comes to attracting, developing, exciting, and retaining exceptional people. Also, be, because when people keep leaving your company, uh there is always something fishy you know or when you see your colleagues constantly resigning willingly not because they got something big but because they feel like they don't have any peace of mind working for that company you know so then there is any no any employee retention which actually costs the company big time internally and externally mm -hmm. And uh, it will leave you also questioning your existence there. You will start to look for other jobs uh, or look for negative sides of the company that also have to convince you to leave, all those kind of things. So yeah, let's go through the challenge document. I always talk, God, I always have a lot of stories, but yeah, let's go through the challenge document. Before going there, can I confirm that everything is, clear that you are following me that we've been together all this time hey okay thank you so much everyone let's go through the culture fit exercise now um so the background here is Imagine that after two months of you joining the company called ABC, your manager requests a one-on-one -on -one meeting to provide feedback. And then during the meeting, the manager expresses concerns about your fit into the company culture. And here are some of the areas he talked about during the meeting. Number one, communication style. The manager stated that your communication style is too formal and rigid 
for the company's collaboration atmosphere. And while the team values open and youthful communication, let's be paying attention to key information within the challenge. So the team at ABC, they value open and youthful communication. And it just is suggested that you adapt your communication to be more casual and interactive. Like they don't want you to be more formal. You can communicate um, something in another way that fits into the company communication culture. They want you to be youthful and to be casual and interactive. Probably because that's when they get to have more ideas or more information shared within the team. And then collaboration. The manager knows a lack of active participation in team discussion and collaborative projects. And he specifically says that you are not, not more proactive in sharing ideas during stand-up meetings and engaging in team activities in general. Okay, I, I, I believe everyone who don't talk during stand-ups. Okay. Let me not point fingers. <laughs> but yeah, I believe we will be able to learn from this to everyone who just wants to stay silent during stand-up meetings and even during any other engagement, like guest talks, um, CBS, anything that is an engaging activity. And then adaptability. There have been instances where your response to change or unexpected challenges seemed hesitant, said the manager. This was about adaptability. And then from uh, professionalism and work-life balance, the manager questions why you don't participate in team bonding and casual fun activities. You know, he, he questioned that because he believes it's important to be part of those activities. And while maintaining professionalism is crucial, the feedback highlights a need to balance it with a more approachable de manual within the casual work environment. And then the fifth, this was the fourth, and then the fifth, it's also about team funding bonding initiatives. The manager encourages you to take more active role in proposing and participating in activities that foster positive collaboration. So here we have more information that are accompanied by the questions. That's number one, the main reason why your manager said that your communication style is too formal <clears throat> is because you once sent him a Slack message about a strong suggestion for improving a project. But when he called you out during the team meeting to present that idea loudly, you hesitated to share it because you fear sounding overly critical and formal. You know, you have this, you have this thing that you are working on and because of it, it scared you to raise your idea and you ended up not raising it. So moving forward, what approaches, steps? Actually, when we are asking about approaches or saying, uh, uh, using how, all those kind of things. We want you to give out steps. We don't want you to give out what you will respond specifically. So here we want to know what approaches will you take to build confidence in voicing your unique opinions during ABCT meetings in the future while aligning with the team's open and interactive communication style? How are you going to navigate this? We just want approaches. We don't want what you are going to be responding to um, to your manager. None of the questions here should be about responding to your manager. It should, it, it, they are going just to be about your approach. What do you think you can do in this situation? Um, someone is selecting Alexander, I think it's you. Okay, thank you. The number two on collaborative feedback. The main reason why your manager raised that feedback, you know, the collaborative feedback we have here, when he told you that you lack active participations during discussions and collaborative projects and specifically into stand-up meetings. So the reason why he said this was that your manager, um, I mean, was that during the previous stand-up meeting, 
the focus was on ad identifying a certain project roadblocks and while others actively shared their challenges you remain their challenges on this project remember for you you just remained silent until the end of the stand up so moving forward in the future what steps will you take to overcome your hesitation and be confident to contribute meaningfully to this discussion during the stand up this is going to be a good exercise for us to build our confidence really into sharing our ideas especially during stand ups probably you have a question but you feel like it's a small question and you don't want to ask it so this is really going to help you learn how to build your confidence into raising your ideas no matter how you feel like they they are going to sound and then number 3 there has been constant changes in the past big projects your team is working on and the day before your one on one the one on one session this one where that you had with your manager uh the day before that where was i yeah the day before that the ceo of the company announced a sudden change in that big project deadline requiring everyone to adjust the workflow their own workflow so your teammates welcomed the change with a proactive approach but for you you just commented immediately that the management should, should see it and conclude their desired approach to this project because too many changes affect your work focus. Of course, you are right. Too many changes are going to be are affecting your focus on work. But do you feel like this was the correct way to do so? Of course not. You know, and your comment is the main reason the manager gave you the adaptability concern. So moving forward, what mindset are you going to adopt to have an adaptable approach to navigate future unexpected challenges in this scenario in this scenario let's not um imagine anything else that goes with adaptability just imagine yourself at abc company and this happened what are you going to do specifically using everything you have at a company you have your manager you have the teammates you have the whole management you have different tools you have everything so let's use the information that we have in this context that you can imagine in this context don't use anything far from the concept that we are talking about here i hope that is clear if it's not note it so that i can repeat it after but yeah and then in the question number four in the past week your manager realized that your team invited you to a colleague's birthday celebration party during evening hours but you did not attend because you typically prefer quiet evenings at home and you actually even worry about blurring professional boundaries there are people who get at work and you feel like you just have to be a professional there are no other kind of relationships you have to develop there and everything but your manager to fit into the culture they want someone who is okay to do this just to attend a, a colleague birthday party that's like one hour and you go back, you know? So he gave you this idea, that this feedback. This is the main reason why your manager gave you the professionalism and looking for work-life balance feedback, you know? So moving forward, how can you better approach this situation in a way that maintains your professionalism while fostering a positive relationship with your colleagues? And then number five, your team is looking for ideas of next month team bonding activity. So considering the company's casual and youthful atmosphere, propose a creative and engaging virtual activity that caters the diverse interests and promotes team collaboration. So the main question is provide the activity name and uh, mention why you chose this activity and add its description and a short script of how this activity is going to be played. Um, I believe we have been seeing so many uh, team bonding activity examples during CBS. Just bring something different that you can creatively think of. Um, 
Yeah. So on the marking rubric, we are going to be just looking at these five things specifically outlined from these five exercises. That is it. Um, questions? Reactions? Anything? Okay, Lillian, Eya, Yvonne, Alexander. All right. If there is no question. Okay, thank you. I liked people last time. Uh, yes, okay, let me explain that. In a few, I liked people who reached in boxes just to require clarifications before working on their task. Like really, if you feel like you don't understand the main task of the challenge, instead of you just uh taking your time to work on it when you feel like you're still confused please reach out so that we can talk about it um it's much better yeah so that you can then take your time to do your work um as it should so rudolph uh let me come back to question number three um so here's a reason why um we were given Oh, Rodolf, I think you, you are talking about the, are you talking about question number three itself or what I talked about basing your ideas into the context of ABC company only? But either way, let me explain them both. So number three, it's about the adaptable uh, feedback you received from your manager. So actually here, we just have like final conclusions uh, of what your manager told you. And then here we have the backstory of every feedback. You know, we have the backstory, like your manager uh, based on this to give you this final thing, you know, to tell you that uh, you were not um, I mean, you were not adapting quickly to different changes within the company. So this is the backstory of it. You know, the backstory is here on the adaptable one. So there has been constant changes. There has been constant changes, like constant changes. There has been changes that kept happening over time. In the past, on a big project that your team is working on. So imagine... Um, how can I call it? So for instance, you were working on a certain project last week. So imagine if it kept changing, you know, you, you had this deliverable on Monday, things to work on on Monday, Tuesday, but when you got on Thursday, Yabi said, uh -uh, we're, not, we're not going to be focusing on this anymore. Change your focus to this, you know? So I believe this is super understandable. So there has been constant changes in, in the past on that same project that your team is working on. And the day before your one-on-one, -on -one, the day before your one-on-one -on -one with your manager, the ABC CEO announced a sudden change, another change in that big project deadlines requiring everyone to adjust their workflow. You know, like everything you were working on, um, with everything that is in your workflow or processes you are following, everything is going to be changing because the deadlines have changed. So your teammates welcomed the change with a proactive approach. They said, okay, let's adjust. But for you, you commented here um, that the management should sit and conclude their desired approach. Like you would want the Yabi sit and really conclude what he's looking forward to. Uh, into into this project, into that project, just talking from that example. Like you would like them to sit and conclude and give you the final project details, you know. So this is why you said here, you commented that the management should sit and conclude their desired approach to this project because too many changes really affect your work focus. And you are true, but we should be adapting to changes. It's for the better of the company, for you know, there is no need of doing something that is no longer needed or working with deadlines that are no longer serving the purpose of the project. So changes might come anytime. We saw that into the change management exercise. So 
Your comment, you saying this is the main reason the manager gave you the adaptability concern. It's the main reason your manager told, uh, gave you um, this kind of feedback, that your response to change or any unexpected challenges, they look hesitant, like you are hesitating to adapt. So moving forward, what mindset are you going to adopt to have an adaptable approach to navigate future unexpected challenges? Think of it, what I was saying as an addition to all of these questions, I want you to base all of them into the ABC company context. You know, for instance, is it um, like here on the communication style, we are going to be looking at your learning, your, your commitment to learning. So are you going to be learning just from Google or you are you going to just look for strategies to learn from what you have internally within the company? It might be learning from a colleague, just to give you some hints. So yeah, I want you to base this scenario with uh, the ABC company perspective. Like think through within the company, how you can address all this using what you have in the company and who you have in the company uh, to be better in the future in every scenario that we have here. Uh, Rodolphe, is it clear now? Okay. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. See you shortly in CBS. I hope we're excited. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. We can stop the recording.